Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm an independent embedded systems consultant at Broadwell Consulting Incorporated and the creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project. Today, we're going to be taking a look at power consumption. The Serial Wombat, if I would say it had a weakness, power consumption is probably one of them. Uh, at operation, it pulls about three mil, uh, milliamps, regardless of whether you're doing anything useful or not. Uh, and so we're going to take a look when you're not using it to shut that down. It's still relatively high at about 700 microamps, but it's certainly a big improvement over 3 milliamps. So we do that through two different commands, sleep and wake. And those can be used to put the Wombat, in, the Serial Wombat chip in low power mode or wake it back up to full power mode. Uh, let's take a look at a circuit we're going to be using to do that. Here's the circuit we're going to be using. Here's a Serial Wombat 4B chip with its bypass capacitor. We've got a couple of pull-up resistors that are pulling up our I2C -E bus. We're using an, a Node MCU clone uh, to drive our circuit. We've got one of our outputs that's going to go to PWM to, to demonstrate one of the important aspects. We're going to use the second one of our pins as an input to read a pot. And the third pin we're going to use to drive the high line on the pot. If we're worried about power consumption, we don't want to connect this line to high, that line to low, because then we've got a resistance path constantly between power and ground, which, you know, uh, allows a constant current flow, which is the opposite of what we're interested in if we're trying to conserve power. So, and then other than that, real simple connection. I uh, connected up to the 3.3 provided by the Node MCU and the clock and data lines on the I squared C. Let's take a look at the uh, sample sketch we're going to use. It's available if you've downloaded the most recent version of the Serial Wombat Arduino library through the library manager, which I always recommend. It's available under examples, Serial Wombat, Serial Wombat 4D power management. And if we look at this, it's real simple. We're going to uh, instantiate a serial wombat. We're going to create a PWM as an example, a pod as an example. We'll say, okay, these are the pins that we're connected to. Those match up with the diagram we just looked at. We're going to initialize the wire. Uh, we're going to initialize the serial wombat chip, the PWM, and the pot. We're going to set the pin mode on the pin that we're using to drive the pot to an output. We want this pin to be an output. It's either going to be high or low. And then we're going to initialize the serial to uh, allow us some debug output. Other than that, it's very simple. Uh, we're going to go into a low power mode where we're going to set the pot pin low uh, so that it doesn't have current flowing through that pot from high to low. We're going to put the serial wombat to sleep and we're going to wait five, five seconds. Then we're going to wake it up. We're going to set that pin high. We'll give it 250 milliseconds to even out and for the serial wombat to be able to establish a, uh, uh, an averaging and filtering. And then we're going to print out the value that we read from the pot in millivolts. And then we're going to go back to sleep. So it's real simple. And when we do that, uh, if you notice, I have current measured here. I actually have this line broken out to a multimeter that will measure the amount of current that's flowing in from the node MCU to this entire circuit. So pretty simple. Let's take a look and see how it works. We can see here we're getting values that come in and these values are going to range roughly between 3.3 uh, volts and zero volts. I've got it turned all the way over there. I'm getting about 2.9. I'll turn it all the way down. And we'll see what we get. And we get two millivolts, which is very, very close to zero. And what we can see on the fluke right here is that as we switch back and forth between low power mode and high power mode, we're going between about 34 microamps and about 3300 microamps. So a factor of about 100 worth of power saving. Uh, that's going to vary quite a bit depending on your system with uh, what you've got going on in your particular circuitry. Let's take a look real quick at a logic capture of what's going on on that PWN pin that we configured. We'll pull up this LA uh, command thing. I've got our, our uh, clock and data, and then I've got connected up to channel three, our PWM. And we can see 
Note that it stayed high here. It might go high, it might go low. The serial wombat chip stops when we issue the sleep command. And whatever the state of its output was, that's where it stayed. So if you had a motor or a heater or something like that connected up to this, you'd want to make sure that you put this in a safe state before you called that sleep command. Uh, so real quick, let's talk about some of the details of the sleep aspects. When the Serial Wombat 4B chip goes to sleep, its output freeze and the input stop monitoring mostly. There's an important caveat to that. The PWMs, they could stop in a high state or a low state. So make sure you put those in a safe state. Servos might stop in a high state or a low state. So make sure you put those in a safe state. Protected outputs will maintain their last value and stop protecting when you're in a safe state. So if you're relying on the protected output function to protect your circuitry, consider what you want to do before you go into the sleep state. If you're using the I2C to UART bridge, it might stop in the middle of a byte if a transmission's in progress, which you have to ask yourself, what would that do to the receiver? The watchdog countdown timer stops, so you're not going to get watchdog timing out anymore if you go into sleep mode. And the in, an, analog input filtering averaging pauses. So whatever samples you had before, it's going to hold on to them. It's going to average them. So, you know, you may want to reset the analog system or uh, allow enough time for that filtering and averaging to accommodate the, the new uh, signals that come in after you come out of sleep state. So the important point here is be sure to set your outputs to safe states before going to sleep. There are some pin modes that can wake up the Serial Wombat chip. The Serial Wombat chip uses interrupts for some of the uh, functionality that it uses, and an interrupt will bring us out of sleep state. First of those is UART receive. So if you send data to the Serial Wombat chip, if it's in sleep mode, it'll come out of sleep mode. And the first byte that you receive uh, will probably be garbage because the clock isn't steady for some microseconds after it first starts up. Uh, secondly, the pulse measurement in microsecond mode uses interrupts to grab those uh, those times and calculate how long the pulse is. So that can wake us up. So if you've got pulse measurement enabled, uh, you'll want to turn that off through a reset. Uh, also, the quadrature encoder, if you're using interrupt mode for really fast transitions, those interrupts will wake up the serial wombat chip and it'll start consuming its full three milliamps worth of power. If you don't want this functionality, there's a reset command that you can call that will cause the serial wombat to go through a reset and that will clear all of the pin modes and interrupts, then put the slip chip to sleep. After you wake up, reconfigure your chip with the pin modes that you were using prior to going to sleep. That's all we have today on power consumption reduction. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, uh, hit the like button below. If you want to keep up with new updates for the Serial Wombat chip, the Arduino library, new products that I come out with, then by all means hit the subscribe button so that you can uh, get that. The YouTube channel is how I make most of my new product announcements. Uh, and finally, if you're using power consumption uh, functionality, leave a comment below. Let us know what you're doing. If it works good for you, not so good. If And if there's other functionality that you'd like to see in the Serial Wombat chip line, uh, we're coming out with a new uh, PIC 24FJ256GA702 version of the Serial Wombat firmware. It'll have 18 I.O. pins and a whole lot more functionality. Lots of really interesting stuff, including touch and uh, inter-pin connectivity. Uh, if you're interested in new features, if there's something that you know, you're having trouble with your Arduino, you say, boy, I'd really like to be able to hand this functionality off to the Serial Wombat firmware to handle for me. Leave me a comment below and let me know about those kind of things. That's all we have today. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features to the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, 
ISO 14971 and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwalk Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about Serial Wombat will not be returned.